Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome four-time Olympic medalist, world champion sprinter, and broadcaster for NBC, Atto Bolden. So light em. Pleasant good, good evening to you, ladies and gentlemen. As you can see, I am joined on the stage by the sport of athletics, two of the, the most prominent and experienced champions in its history. Let me first introduce Veronica Campbell Brown and direct you to the video board to give you a better sense of just what she's done. To the USA, Stuart of Jamaica, Campbell Brown, Jamaica. No problem that time. Well, Ahura got a good start indeed, and so did Campbell Brown. Campbell Brown and Ahura going very strongly indeed, and skippers have got a lot of work to do. Oh, that could be Campbell Brown on the far side. We're going to have to wait and get the photograph on that one. 11. I'm given now at 11.04, with Okabari closing down in third place at 11.06. So two one hundredths between the top three. First two, absolutely level, but that's a good win by uh, Veronica Campbell Brown. That's right. She has 18, count them ladies and gentlemen, 18 world championship and Olympic medals. Seated a little closer to me is Wilson Kipketer, and he, all he has done is be a three-time world champion and a two-time Olympic medalist. Let's take a look at Wilson. Man, Wilson Kipketer set these championships alight with a world record in the heats to straw. So Wilson Kipketer, we'll see. Well, he still has to do his running. He wants to keep out of trouble, that's for sure. Tuparitis starting pretty fast. Mochibon also on the inside. Big man from Germany. Kurz is a big man, but Wilson Kipkita does what we probably would expect. He gets out in front straight away now. You can lightning strike twice in the same place. Kipkita striding around the top bend. The clock. Keep an eye on it. 143.96 is the world record. He's coming down towards the line now. He's going to be very close indeed. Is he going to get any? me 142.68 I can't believe this that is incredible two world records that's an indoor world record which still stands obviously David Rudisha relieved him of his outdoor world record recently Veronica let me start with you and ask you uh, I know you were here yesterday to listen to George Foreman uh, and his riveting uh, speech yesterday one of the things that stood out for me that he said <clears throat> was that when he was a young boy growing up in Texas, he had no other options. Boxing was his way out. And were he not to be a boxer, he would probably have been a laborer working, working on the road. Tell me about your growing up in Jamaica and what your options were as a young athlete. Actually, I enjoyed uh, Mr. Foreman interview yesterday. He's very yeah, funny, was very inspirational. It was amazing. And I do agree with a lot of um, the things he said in terms of growing up and how he was poor and he had no other choice. For me, it was the same thing. I grew up in a very poor family and um, discovering that I had the gift to sprint was my only way out to get an education and to advance my career. And so I had no other choice. I was blessed to have track and field in my life, which has helped me to achieve all that, all that I've achieved. So I'm very grateful for, for the gift. That's right. Now, Wilson, we're in marathon season, as you know. The, the New York City Marathon was last weekend. So I'm, a, I'm of the belief that there are only two types of people in the world. There's the one group that believes that two hours for the marathon for men is never going to be broken, even though obviously we're a lot closer than we've ever been. And then there's the other group that believes, oh, it's absolutely gone. I want to know which group you belong to and why you think that. Yeah, I should answer that I will be in a, belong to two groups. <laughs> <laughs> so you but think uh, it could go either way? Yeah, I'm trying. Uh, I'm not going nowhere. But uh, I will try to explain anyway in the, you know, yeah. the yes group and the no group. Okay. So with the yes group, yes, I can say that because as a professional runner, when I was running, so I see the way I was running also planning to run, you know, the event dress yeah. for the, you know, 800. So in a marathon, you know, if somebody ran anyway, let's say one hour, one hour, they can do it because the world record for half marathon is the 58 right. or something. So if they run 60 anyway, so they can make it in two hours. And the way things is going now, you see the way I think uh, for the last seven years, 
we have seen records and records. Aile, Patrick Macau, mm -hmm. Wilson Gibson, now uh, Tennis Kimeta. So they are doing it every year. And now it's uh, so that two minutes is going to be there soon. And then the other side of knowing about the training, you know, the no side now. Yeah. It's not easy to break that two minutes anyway in marathon. Yeah, because two minutes on paper doesn't seem like a lot, but yeah. two minutes in terms of where it puts you on the, on the course is a big difference, correct? It's a big difference, and this, we are talking two minutes after you're running almost right. 40 kilometers. Of course, so yes. You are, you are tired, you know, you are getting too closer to it, and you are almost, you know, out of uh, control. Yes. So in that point, it's not easy unless somebody really starts working with the coach, working with the manufacturing shoes or any company, you know, to yeah. get the right things. And then I don't know if we can work with the weather man in the upstairs to make the right weather, you know, to my twin, and then also the supporters to support that. I right. think, uh, but then, so that's, uh, you know, I'm in both sides, looking, trying to say, when is it going to happen, or oh, it's not going to happen. So you, so in other words, you are, you are officially on the fence. <laughs> I'm just sitting <laughs> in the edge. All right. R both of you are very um, active in terms of charities um, around the world, as well as locally with you, Denmark, Kenya, with you, Jamaica. So you obviously understand the importance of giving, but I want to know what has sport given to you? What has sport given to your life? Sport has given me, I would say, almost everything. It is because of sport why I was, why I, why, why I was able to attend university. Yes. My parents was not able at all to send to university. So through track and field, I received a scholarship to go to, to study in the US. Sport has allowed me to travel the world, to meet great people, to um, be influential, to inspire others. Through all that I've gained from sport, it is my passion to give back and to help because I realize that I get a lot of help when I was younger and there are a lot of young girls or even young boys who need help. And so I feel like I have a good way to impact young girls. And so I started the Veronica Cambron Foundation in Jamaica, which um, gives scholarships to girls at the high school level um, to aid with, with um, their education. I also visit a lot of girls' homes in Jamaica to try and uplift and motivate young women. So, and I've done a lot of other charitable things. I'm very passionate about giving back. I believe that we all need to help each other and for all, of the, for all people who have the ability to give, they should give no matter how small it is because by giving we help to build each other up. So I enjoy doing it and I thank God for the opportunity to help others. Fantastic. Now you were born in Kenya, you eventually represented Denmark. Jamaica and Kenya have something in common, and you hear it a lot in the broadcast of track and field meets. They talk about Kenyan athletes and Jamaican athletes being hungrier than some of their competition. But it's not a literal hunger, is it? What is, what is that hunger, what is that that separates the athletes from your country where you, if you have a, a race that's close and there's one of you guys and somebody from another country, you're almost betting on, on that person because these athletes have that inner hunger. What is that? Is that something you can put into words? I think you cannot put it into words, but uh, I could say, you know, this a belief of these people say, so I'm good. And these people also, you know, I mean, we crew have been uh, as light, you know, I mean, we yes. live in uh, fighting, we can walk longer, you know, you can resist and you can take the pain. So, so many athletes, so they can say, so why Kenya is so good? I says, you know, Kenya is a uh, hilly places. You, have yeah. <laughs> you know, we could Forest, sometimes you have to fight your way to go through the forest. So it's a mental thing. Yeah. You know, so you are tough doing it. So if you see, so you say you cannot beat me, you don't know me anyway, you know, I know <laughs> what I've been doing. So. And uh, so the other thing also, you know, when in 1968 with Kipchoge Keino, so like now I think uh, 3,000 steeplechase in Kenya, they have been winning it in Olympic World Championships, I don't know, since when. So that's the belief to say, so now, you know, Kenya, we are better than that. In a, that is our event. So they believe this is our thing. We can do better than anyone else in the world. Yes. So that's, they have that belief. So you cannot put it in the words because that comes from the person. When he goes there, he say, I have to keep that image or the prestige name of the country. Now, Veronica, you talked about the fact that you went to university on a scholarship. But the Jamaican sprint machine has changed since, the, since you were a young athlete. Um, in fact, what's happening now is 
athletes instead of all the young Jamaican talent going off to foreign universities, what's happening now is they stay at home and they control their careers from an early age and the success has been, has been, has been very evident. If Veronica Campbell Brown was leaving high school now as a top Jamaican star, as you did a couple years ago, would you take the option of going to another university abroad or do you think you'd stay at home right now and why? I think I would take the same path because I believe education was very important, is very important to me. And I wanted to create that balance between track and field and earning a degree. And it was easier for me to get a scholarship in the US than I think maybe harder in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. And I really, <coughs> It is, yeah, I would definitely, <laughs> I would still to go to America. So, you, so, you, so you, yeah. wouldn't, you wouldn't change a thing? I would not change a thing. Now, Wilson, she can't answer this question because she has three Olympic gold medals. You and I have gold and, you and I have bronze and silver from the Olympic Games. And of course, when you're an Olympic silver medalist or a bronze medalist, you have to tell the story your whole life. Because people say, well, if you get a bronze medal, well, at least you got something. But if you got a silver medal, oh, what happened? Did you, did you, did you trip? Did you, was something wrong with your shoe? So my question for you is, you and I, we missed out on that ultimate prize in our sport. But I have said many, many times, 1996, in that final, if I get gold, maybe my career will last one year longer because I would have been, you couldn't have, you couldn't have told me anything, I would have known, I would have known everything. What have, what have you learned in your life by missing out on that ultimate thing? Has it taught you anything? Is there something that you take with you every day that, 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 that you can trace back to the fact that that one thing is missing? Not really. I'm not going back anymore to that <laughs> point. You know, I mean, it, I'm a little disappointed or not disappointed, but uh, <laughs> I'm not thinking about it because life must go on. Yes. Yeah, I cannot use to anything. That's an excuse. And, uh, so the only thing I look at, you know, to move forward, because uh, if I look back in 1996, Yes. I was really running very well. I was number one in the world. That's right. I ran athlete of the year in the world. Right. But I was not in Atlanta because of uh, some other reasons. Yes. And I don't want also to discuss that because it's uh, <laughs> behind me. Right. And then in um, Sydney, which was really, I was hoping going to win that, but I had some injuries before anyway, after yes. 99, after, uh, you know, not, not 99, 97. When I was running well, the video you saw here was really... Things was going well, winning world championship indoors, breaking two world records, breaking world record outdoors, winning world championship. So I was really in good shape, so thinking next year I'm going to run very <laughs> fast. And I got sick. I had malaria in right. uh, 98. So in 98, I came too fast to run two races. I won Monaco, number two in Zurich, and I went straight to European championship. So finishing in a running 141, and then in European Championship, last, number eight, running 151, from 141 to 151, which I was really completely say, this is the end of it. Right. I right. could not run anymore. And then I was thinking about the Olympic thing. I say, you know, it's only one year to go. You know, you have 99. I came back 99 running well, won another World Championship, and I was thinking now Sydney is very close. And then... Three weeks before the World Championship, yeah, Olympic, I was training. I taught the muscles, and I, um, I could not train for three weeks. And from that, so you know, get psychologically weaker and weaker. So I was not confident going to uh, Sydney. But then when I was there, so it was like I, I was totally lost. But then in finals, I was behind until the last 100 meters when I woke up. And I saw, you know, he said... Uh, so you woke up in the Olympic final? In the, in the Olympic <laughs> final. <laughs> thinking, you know, I, I can win this race. But then I just get that close yeah. by winning it. But anyway, you know, that's life. Hey, life is a silver medalist. It's yeah. not too bad, right? <laughs> and then so I was thinking, anyway, another four years, 2004. Yeah. Right. So I was training very well. And then one month before, so again, I have a problem with the uh, armstring, which I could not sprint. So in a... Uh, Athens, I was doing well until the last 50 meters, you know, and I was trying to go. And then I saw the Russian guy coming, uh, the South African guy, Mlausi, in the inside. And I said, you know, I have no energy anymore. Even I was trying, I have no energy <laughs> anymore. There's no, you know, I think my uh, gearbox was uh, broken. So yeah. I was trying to change and there was nothing left. 
So I say, okay, guys. We've all been there. And then from there, so I think uh, they could show a video. I wave anyway in the last, and I say, so that was the end of it. I was not going to run again, even if it's another four years. I think I was not going to make, because I came from Silver, go to France, so I was going the, the wrong way. We've all been there. Veronica, you um, have been able to win at every level in this sport, World Youth, World Junior, World Indoor, World Championships, Olympic Games. And not only have you done it at all levels, but in so many different events. And you're still going. Um, you know, we were talking backstage about you possibly, you know, three more years, which would, which would give you, I, I believe, almost 20 years um, <laughs> in, in, in the sport. How come there have been so few track and field athletes to do that? Because we, we have a sport where you hear about these great prodigies, and they have these fantastic junior careers. And then two years later, you go, whatever happened to this young girl or that young boy? What is it that, that you think um, is, the, is the formula for being able to sustain and have the, the, the longevity in the career that you had? I think the most important thing is that I recognize that I am truly blessed yeah. and I was born to sprint. And I embrace that. I'm determined. I always want to achieve more. And it seems like no matter how much I achieve, I really feel like there's still more for me to achieve. And that is one of the things that keep pushing me. I'm curious to see how fast I can run. What more can I accomplish? And I think those are some of the things that's driving me. And um, it's, it's just been a blessing. It's, it's a blessing to have such a long career. So I'm just grateful for all that um, God has given me. Well, we certainly wish you the best. Not, not like us retired folks, we certainly wish you the best in the next uh, two world championships and Olympic games. Ladies and gentlemen, Veronica Campbell-Brown, Wilson Kipketer.